I'm starting a new series where at least once a month, I'm going to talk about some of the comments that I've received over the past month. Just give my thoughts about it because as a content creator, sometimes it's hard to be able to respond to all of it. Even though I read all of them, I can't respond to them all. And also I can't truly express what I want to say in writing. Sometimes it's just easier to do it in a video format. This will be all forms of videos that I make. So not just YouTube shorts and long videos, but TikToks as well. So if you guys don't believe that I read my comments, I do. And actually some of the videos that I've created, they span because of some of the comments that you guys have made. I want to keep this lightly edited. I don't really want to do much research on a topic. I just want to give my genuine thoughts about each and every comment that I talk about. This comment is from the short ranking characters from weakest to strongest and this user, I'm not gonna say their whole name because it's long, but it's XU8. They say Mihawk is nothing compared to Shanks. Shanks is stronger, which I'm not really sure why so many people do this. I understand that people have their preferences and that there's no definitive answer when it comes to this topic. A lot of people are going to say that Shanks is the best hockey user or he is the strongest hockey user, which is not confirmed, but it's pretty much true. And then Mihawk, he is the world's strongest swordsman. And it's been stated that his sword skill is superior to Shanks and that Shanks became famous because of clashing with Mihawk. I get that. I think it's close and personally, I think Mihawk is stronger, but I'm not going to slander anybody or think they're crazy or think it's blasphemistic to say that Shanks is stronger. But there's been plenty of times that it's been displayed that in order to be a master swordsman, you need to have good hockey. Your hockey plays an important factor in that. And even when it comes to Black Blades, which is something only we've seen Ryuma and Mihawk do, that it's been speculated that it has something to do with hockey. So I don't really understand why so many people, and I guess it's because Mihawk hasn't really done anything. And honestly, besides the Divine Departure, which that's impressive, I'm not gonna lie, but Shanks hasn't really done anything in the story either. I don't know why so many people think the gap between the two is that extreme because it's not. The next comment comes from the same video. It is from Lizzie Mosley 4820 and it says, bro, you are stupid. Luffy defeated Kaido. This is something that I also don't understand why people think just because you defeated somebody one time that automatically makes you stronger than them. There's been plenty of times that it's been displayed that somebody who is physically stronger that they're not necessarily going to win every fight and just because the underdog wins once doesn't mean if you make him fight the same person 10 times that he's going to win 10 out of 10 times because if you look at the context of the story luffy yes he fought different people on his way to kaido and kaido he was fighting people as well they both weren't at 100 percent but this was a fight to propel Luffy into the upper echelon of strength, introducing him into being one of the top tiers. And Oda wouldn't have written it for Kaido to have to go through all these opponents, just run through the gauntlet with the Akaz Akazaya 9, with um, the Supernova, with Yamato, with Luffy multiple times if he wasn't that dude. I'm not saying that after getting his awakening and having advanced conquerors that Luffy isn't close, but for somebody to just finally get those power-ups, if they were to restart again, Luffy's not winning. And so I think that this statement, it kinda doesn't put it into context of why and how Luffy was able to defeat Kaido. And also so many people consider Kaido to either be the strongest character in the series or one of the strongest characters in the series, definitely top three of those that are aligned. And so if you say that, then that means that you already think Luffy is the strongest character in the series and there's like multiple arcs still left and there's multiple opponents he has to face. So it wouldn't make sense for Luffy to be the strongest just yet. This comment, it comes from the video talking about Zoro versus Luchi was the length justified. And it's from Iro10800 and says, to be fair, Zoro didn't win. It was a tie. 
both up, but Zoro ran. Luchi was ready for mode scrapping. In theory, Luchi won based off disqualification. I don't even know where to start. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if you want to say Zoro left, that technically is true because the scene that's going around with the Gorosei showing up, um, it's time for them to go. I don't think that they should be there just standing around and twiddling their thumbs because the Gorosei, they're immortal and they're pretty freaking tough. But at the same time, we're not going to ignore the fact that they were clashing for a couple chapters going back and forth. And then when push came to shove, when it was time to get serious, Zoro, he did leave a nasty scar on Luchi. And it wasn't that he left because he didn't think he could win or it wasn't like he left because he thought that it was something that he didn't need to take care of. No, which is in order to progress the story, Oda made Jinbei or forced Jinbei to take Zoro and leave. And right after that, Luchi, he powered down and he's huffing and puffing. And you can't even say that Zoro took the fight as seriously as other opponents in the past. He didn't put his durag on and he also didn't use Ashra. If the fight were to go on any longer, Luchi, after suffering a wound like that, he definitely wasn't going to survive much longer versus Zoro. This comes from the short talking about Hancock's Delfru is more crazier than we thought. It's from Zachary Baker 3156 and it says this would be scary for awakening probably even more powerful than sugar. The only one who can undo the stone is the user and if they die the people stay to stone. That's scary enough as is but imagine a suicide run on Mary Joa with an awakening love for and just turning as many people to stone before they kill you. Not gonna lie, Hancock, if you actually think about it, her devil fruit, it's really not as broken as we think it is. It's only broken because it's her, because Hancock is such a beautiful woman that unless you're Luffy, obviously, but most people, they are going to lust after her, hence why she's able to turn them into stone. Just think about it, if you, had somebody that was ugly, like for example, Trouble, and used her dough fruit, he's definitely not turning as many people to stone. <laughs> Which makes me think about what her awakening could be because she can already hit people and even hit inanimate objects physically and turn them into stone. So what could she do? Maybe it has something to do with, because her dough fruit, it works off of attraction to her or finding her cute or just, I guess, kind of loving her in a way. Maybe she can use her mirror mirror beam um, on people who don't find her attractive or don't lust after her. And maybe that's what's her, her awakening and she can turn them into stone. I think that the only way to make her death fruit complete is that she can turn anybody to stone no matter what. Or maybe it'll be to the point where she can then turn them into her love slaves, kind of. I think there was something like that in another anime i'm not sure but that's also a possibility for awakening the last comments i'm gonna put together because it's on the same video and it's kind of in the same point to give a little bit of context i posted the short about ranking like characters based off of strength on my tiktok and then i did a follow-up video talking about luffy versus because kizaru because people were saying that luffy could beat kaido and so i asked the question could kaido beat or does Kaido, if you think Kaido beats Kizaru, then Luffy doesn't beat them and they said this. I'm not gonna lie, I already know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna say om um, underscore nom said fresh Luffy and fresh Kizaru. Kizaru is getting rocked. And then Astro Season said, so you just left out that Luffy had been fighting before Kizaru arrived. Luffy was already scratched up when he fighting when he started fighting against Kizaru. So I'm gonna address Astro season first because I think that's easier. Um, When has there, number one, ever been a time that Luffy hasn't been scratched up a little bit or previously fought people before he fought a main antagonist? It's rare that that hasn't happened. Also, secondly, Luffy, before he fought Kizaru in chapter 1091, um, time had definitely passed since the Seraphim and Luffy fought and also you see him eating in chapter 1089 so Luffy he's relatively healthy I'm not going to give him that excuse now talking about fresh Kizaru versus fresh Luffy and I plan on doing a in-depth video about this I kind of did one before in the past um and I'll leave that in the description below but in terms of this 
I, I just don't understand how people can ignore that Luffy and Kizaru in chapter 1095, they were both on the ground at the same time. They both weren't moving and they both weren't fighting. Now, if you want to say the reason why Luffy's like that, it's not because of anything Kizaru did, it's because of the time limit of Gear 5th. Well, Kizaru forced Luffy to go into that mode. And so if Luffy had to fight to the point where he's exhausted and unable to move, then that just means that Kizaru, with all Luffy getting those power-ups, forced him to fight like that. So he forced Luffy into that form, forced him to fight to the point of exhaustion. That just means that Kizaru is on Luffy's level and they're equal. And also, if you want to make an argument, well, Kizaru technically got up first before Luffy, so... I think that people, if anything, you should be lucky that we're calling it a draw because, well, Kizaru got up first. So, I mean, if you want to say, who do you think the winner is? But thank you guys so much for watching. Honestly, I have no clue what I'm going to call this new series. If y'all have ideas, let me know in the comment section below. And maybe because on TikTok, you guys should definitely follow me there. I don't exclusively post One Piece content. Honestly, it's kind of rare that I do, actually not gonna lie so i may start including comments from other videos as well thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok it's on the screen and in the description below thank you guys so much so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential